in general there are three methods to solve the steady state solutions in circuits containing a sinusoidal voltage source we have already gone through method 1 which uses trigonometric functions in this method we will write down the differential equations by equating the voltage drops around each loop in a circuit to zero we will then guess a trigonometric solution of the form it equal to i0 cos omega t plus 5 in the next step we'll expand cos omega t plus 5 and sin omega t plus 5 using the trigonometric formula and then equate the coefficients of cos omega t and sin omega t separately equal to 0 and from this we can get the solutions of i0 and phi so this was the method we have been following till now we learned two more methods that is method involving exponential functions and then method involving complex impedances we'll discuss about the method involving exponential functions in this video and we'll devote the discussion on complex impedances in a later video in the method involving exponential functions we'll first write down the differential equation for the voltage drop around each loop as we have done in method 1 we will write it in terms of the complex current i tilde t in the next step we'll assume a complex solution for the current of the form i tilde t equal to i tilde e raise to i omega t the actual current in the circuit will be given by the real part of this complex current so in this video we'll be exploring this technique the method involving complex exponentials is much cleaner and quicker than the method involving trigonometric functions this method is extremely powerful and it works consistently for both resistors which include real impedances and then reactive elements such as inductors and capacitors which will be having imaginary impedances before we proceed let me introduce you to the jargons that i may be using in this discussion in the previous discussions we wrote the instantaneous current it as equal to i0 then cos of omega t so this is the time dependent instantaneous current in the circuit now in the following discussion we'll use the representation i tilde t so this is the complex current if i write a tilde above i t then it indicates that it is a complex number then this current will be equal to complex i this term does not have a time dependence and in order to introduce the time dependence will introduce e raise to i omega t we know that e raise to i omega t this will be equal to cos of omega t plus i sin omega t so instead of uh, writing i t equal to i zero cos omega t we'll be using i complex t equal to i complex e raise to i omega t the left hand side has a time dependence and this complex term does not have time dependence but when i complex is multiplied by e raise to i omega t the whole term will be having a time dependence and then we'll introduce the phase into this expression by writing i complex as equal to i multiplied by e raise to i phi where i is the magnitude of this complex i with this in mind let us write the kirchhoff's loop equation for the series rlc circuit that is the total voltage e0 e raise to i omega t will result in a voltage drop across the inductor which we designate as vl and this also cause a drop across the capacitance that is vc and then a finite drop 
will be there across the resistor that is Vr. And if we denote this as equal to E, then according to Kirchhoff's voltage law, we will be having V equal to Vl plus Vc plus Vr. We shall now write that equation here that is L then D I complex T divided by dt. We assume the current as a complex number and then plus R I complex T plus Q complex T over C. This is equal to the total applied voltage that is E0 E rise to I omega T. Now we will take the exponential solution for the current in the form I t equal to I complex E rise to I omega t. Note that both I t and I are complex numbers and I t has time dependence whereas I does not have a time dependence and the time dependence comes from the multiplication with e rise to i omega t. We will now try to find out the charge across the capacitor plates qt from it that is uh, complex qt this is equal to integral complex it dt and this is equal to integral complex i e rise to i omega t dt and this is equal to i complex divided by i omega then e rise to i omega t. In the next step, we will substitute equation number 3 in equation number 1 that is L d i t divided by d t plus R i complex t plus i complex t divided by i omega c equal to e0 e rise to i omega t. We will substitute for i complex t that is i complex t equal to i complex e rise to i omega t. Therefore, L i then i omega e rise to i omega t plus r i complex e rise to i omega t plus i complex e rise to i omega t divided by i omega c equal to e0 e rise to i omega t. We can cancel e rise to i omega t throughout the equation resulting in complex i multiplied by i omega l plus r plus 1 over i omega c equal to e0. We will now solve for the complex current i that is i complex equal to e0 over r plus i omega l plus 1 over i omega c. We see that the current is a complex number and we have to write this equation in the form a plus i b. For that we will multiply the numerator and denominator by the complex conjugate of r plus i omega l minus 1 by omega c. So, i equal to e0 over r plus i omega l minus 1 by omega c multiplied by r minus i omega l minus 1 by omega c divided by r minus i multiplied by omega l minus 1 by 
omega c. This is equal to E0 multiplied by R minus I omega L minus 1 by omega C divided by R square plus omega L minus 1 by omega C the whole square. This equation is now in the proper form of a complex number that is in the a plus ib form. We know that a complex number can be very well written in the polar form. That is if a complex number is a plus ib then in the polar form it can be written as the multiplication of magnitude and phase angle. If the complex number is a plus ib, then its magnitude will be a equal to square root of a square plus b square and the phase would be phi equal to tan inverse b by a. Thus, we can write the complex current i equal to e0 over r square plus omega l minus 1 by omega c the whole square multiplied by square root of r square plus omega l minus 1 by omega c the whole square multiplied by e rise to i phi. This is equal to e0 over square root of r square plus omega l minus 1 by omega c the whole square e rise to i phi which will rewrite as i0 e rise to i phi where we have taken this term as a constant i0. Thus, we obtained I0 as equal to E0 over square root of R square plus omega L minus 1 by omega C the whole square and the phase angle tan delta would be 1 over R omega C minus omega L divided by R. So what we have is a complex current IT. Now the actual current would be the real part of this complex current IT. That is IT equal to the real part of I complex E rise to I omega T and this is equal to the real part of I0 e rise to I phi multiplied by e rise to I omega t and that is equal to the real part of I0 e rise to I omega t plus phi which is equal to I0 cos omega t. because e rise to i omega t plus phi is equal to cos of omega t plus phi plus i sin omega t plus phi and the real part of e rise to i omega t plus phi is just cos of omega t plus phi. This is cos of omega t plus phi and therefore this is equal to we will substitute for i0 which is e0 divided by 
r square plus omega l minus 1 by omega c the whole square multiplied by cos of omega t plus phi we take this as equation number 9 we thus have seen that both it and i are complex numbers and it has a time dependence whereas i does not have a time dependence to introduce a time dependence we can multiply the complex i with e rise to i omega t that is i complex t equal to i complex multiplied by e rise to i omega t and i equal to i zero e rise to i phi so this is just a summary of the four different versions of the letter i which we have been using in this analysis for complex exponential solutions we will use the complex current i tilde now when we take the magnitude of i that will be equal to i zero now if we have to introduce a time dependence to the current then we can multiply complex i with e rise to i omega t resulting in complex it if we take the magnitude of complex it then that will again be equal to i zero if we take the real part of it then that will be equal to it whose amplitude will be equal to i zero so these are the cross connection between the different versions of the letter i which we have been using in the analysis we shall now discuss the graphical representation of alternating current by a complex number let us take the complex current i as x plus iy where x is the real part and y is the imaginary part then the time dependent complex current would be i complex multiplied by e rise to i omega t and that is equal to x plus i y multiplied by e rise to i omega t and in polar form i complex is equal to i zero e rise to i phi where i zero is the magnitude given by square root of x square plus y square and the phase is given by phi equal to tan inverse y by x and this is drawn graphically in this figure where the real part is drawn across the x axis and the imaginary part is drawn along the y direction so that the magnitude i0 would be square root of x square plus y square and this will align at an angle phi equal to tan inverse y by x.